Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. So today, if my first of all, if my face is completely new to your screen, don't forget to go and hit the subscribe button and also give this video a big thumbs up if you do enjoy it. And without any further ado, let's jump straight into this video. <music> Okay, so guys, if you cannot tell by the title of this video, we are going to be talking all about foundation today. So this has been such a requested topic. I put a poll up on my Instagram story asking you guys what are your biggest struggles when it comes to makeup and most of you guys said that foundation is one of your biggest struggles, making it last, having good coverage, having a non cakiness and just general foundation things that happens those things that just are so annoying and if you don't really know what you are doing it gets so frustrating and you just kind of start hating makeup so today we are going to be going through everything with regards to having the perfect base for your makeup so let's jump straight into it first of all how cute is this little yellow top that I got from Zaffel. honestly obsessed I just I'm so feeling yellow this summer really feeling it Okay, so I have hydrated my face with moisturizer. So I have very dehydrated skin. I like to make sure that my foundation is either a hydrating foundation or I've prepped my skin really well to be wearing a matte foundation. So basically, I'm just gonna say it as it is and just say to you, if you do not look after your skin, like on an everyday basis and you don't think about skincare and all of that, I don't know how you can expect your foundation to ever look good. I'm just gonna say it as it is and no not with regards to acne because I have had acne all of my life and only within the last five months has my acne cleared up and I have always made my foundation look absolutely beautiful even with acne so this is not in regards to acne this is mainly just in regard to not taking care of your skin and having flaky patches i understand obviously if you have a skin disorder that is completely different but if you are just the ordinary person and you're not looking after your skin and you're expecting your foundation to look absolutely incredible click off this video right now if you're not prepared to look after your skin because you can't expect something to look good on your face if you aren't putting the effort into your face to be slack smooth and in the best condition that it possibly can be in so i'm just gonna say that straight off the bat because I feel like that is one of the biggest um, problems when it comes to foundation. It's not looking after your skin on the everyday basis and expecting everything just to mask all of those like problems that you're facing with your skin. Let's just jump straight into this now because I just want to show you and go through different finishes for different skin types. So I have dry skin, dehydrated skin. I'm not old enough to have dry skin. I've got dehydrated skin. So I prefer usually to go for a dewy foundation and then just set it a little bit with powder. But if I am feeling a matte foundation, I will go in with a matte foundation and just add a hydrating primer underneath. So if you have oily skin, use a mattifying primer and use a mattifying foundation. Unless you like the dewy look, even with your oily skin, then go for it. But I would still suggest to use a matte foundation because your skin will get oily throughout the day and then you'll have that glow that you're after. So that's what I would recommend. And then if you have combination skin, I would recommend maybe if you've got a more oily T-zone, I would use a mattifying primer and then on the rest of your face, maybe something more hydrating. That's just my personal preference and this is what I do with my makeup clients as well and I've never really had a complaint with their foundation. My three top foundations ever, actually I've got four. So my new favorite is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Foundation. This is a weightless liquid foundation it's got up to 24 hour wear. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a matte foundation. I'm pretty sure it's a matte foundation. It's quite, not drying, but it does dry down on your face. It doesn't stay dewy. And then my second favorite foundation that I've been wearing very, very often is the Wet n Wild Dewy Photo Focus Foundation. This is a new product from Wet n Wild. Absolutely adorable. It. I really love it. The color match is so good for me. So then my third favorite is the Maybelline Fit Me foundations. These are such a favorite of mine. I love the way that they blur my pores. I absolutely adore this foundation and before I got these other two foundations, this was my go-to foundation for every day because it's so nice. It doesn't transfer. It's a really nice lightweight. It's not sheer but it's a medium coverage. It's not like completely full coverage but you can build it to full 
coverage. So yeah, these are my top three foundations. These are the ones that I reach for the most. And then for a heavy nighttime glam, I'll usually reach for my Fenty Pro Filter. That's just my personal preference. When it comes to primer, I am personally going to go in with a hydrating primer because my skin is dry and that's just what I prefer. So my two favorite hydrating primers is this Wet n Wild Hydrating Primer Serum and then the Benefit Professional Hydrating Primer. So yeah, I'm going to go straight in and prime my face. So I'm going to go in with the Wet n Wild Primer Serum because my skin is feeling slightly more dehydrated today. I don't know why. So then what I like to do before I put my foundation on is I like to just spray a hydrating mist on my face. And one of my new favorites is this Urban Decay Re Rebound Collagen Infused Spray. And I just spritz that all over my face. I usually go in with a sponge and just press this into my face just so that it gets pushed into the skin. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, I think I'm gonna go in with the matte foundation. So I'm gonna go in with the Fit Me because I just feel like this one is a foundation that everyone can get their hands on. And I use two different shades because I struggle to get my perfect shade in this foundation. But these two mixed give me my perfect shade. So I'm just gonna quickly go and put some on my face. I'm just applying this now onto my face with just a flat concealer brush just to spread it. I might need a little bit more because the beauty blender tends to suck up more foundation. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my beauty blender. This is a dampened beauty blender. So run it under the tap and just give it a good squeeze so the water goes all the way through. But not that it's dripping with water, obviously. So now I'm just going to go in and just tap this into my skin. I went for a chemical peel yesterday on my face, so my face is like free of like all dead skin. So my skin feels absolutely amazing right now. <laughs> So you kind of just push lightly. The one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to drag because that is not the way it's supposed to happen. You're supposed to bounce it into your skin. I know some people don't really like putting foundation underneath their eyes, but I find that if I do, I don't need to add as much concealer. And then obviously the less you have to add, the better, because then it looks way less cakey. But the key to a good looking foundation is to don't add too much product and try and just cake your face full to cover everything rather spot conceal so that would be taking your concealer and just putting it on the areas that you want to be way more full coverage and then um, blending that out with your beauty blender and then after that going in with your foundation so that it's not cakey and you've already mainly concealed the areas that you don't really want to be showing through so as you can tell this finish is very natural and it's still showing through like a couple of freckles that I have on my nose and there isn't much coverage going on here it's just quite a natural look so I'm gonna go in with a little bit more just to add a little bit more coverage I'm gonna focus it more now on the area that I obviously have more of like the imperfections so that's usually in this more center area for me and then i'm just gonna go in with my beauty blender again and just lightly blend everything in the key to having a flawless foundation base is obviously good skincare and also good applications so just lightly tap it into your face it eventually does blend out and if you have a good foundation and your skin is primed correctly it won't take long to blend out I also like to just take my foundation onto my ear just to give my ear <laughs> the same color as the rest of my face because I find that my ears are usually quite red. I'm gonna come up close. As you can see, my face is really not caked at all. Like, I look fairly natural if I look at myself in the light. Like, it's really not a dramatic full coverage look that I'm going for because I'm trying to show you a nice basic foundation for you to try and attempt at home. So next step is obviously bronzer slash contour or cream contour whichever you prefer but I find personally that a cream contour is so much less cakey and I just personally love a cream contour because it just looks so much more natural than a very um, dramatic powdery bronzer. For like a cream bronzer that what I use you can either go in with a concealer so this is the Revlon Colorstay this is a full coverage concealer so this is for me this has got a little bit too much coverage for what I want so lately I've actually been going in with a skin tint so this is the Lancome Skin Feels Good Hydrating Skin Tint for a Healthy Glow and it's 
got an SPF of 23 in it and it's a non-greasy, oil-free, paraben-free skin tint. So I really love this. I've got it in the shade 08 Honey and I take the tiniest bit of this because I've told I look orange sometimes if I put too much on. Sorry. Let me just listen to everyone. So this is what it looks like and I literally just take this and I dot it on my forehead and then on the higher parts of my cheeks just to give my face like a lift. I will do an in-depth video on contouring at a later stage. For now I just want to show you like my basic everyday foundation routine. And then I'm going to put a little bit down my nose. I'm not really interested in contouring my nose. I'm more so just warming up my nose. Because I don't have a problem with my nose. So I don't need to actually like contour it. And then I like to add a little bit of like bronzer to my chin. And then the left over I'll usually just like put on my cheek area. Because one pump is usually good enough for my whole face. Okay, then I like to take a brush for the steps. So I've got a stippling brush like this. So you can buy these at Diskem or Clicks or just wherever, that is if you're in South Africa. And I'm just going to lightly blend this out. I feel like this just disperses the product so beautifully on your face without like giving you extra coverage. And also because this is a skin tint, it doesn't give you coverage, it just gives you color, which is what I freaking love. So I'm just going to lightly blend this out. So as you can see, it has just given me the most beautiful black glow all over my face and it's given me such a beautiful bronzer look. Like I look really sun-kissed right now. I feel like it's so vibey with my yellow top. <laughs> I personally don't like wearing lots of concealer but I completely understand that some people genetically have darker under eyes and that is okay. So you can go in with a little bit of concealer but one thing, I just want to like bring more awareness to it because I feel like a lot of people think that it's a bad thing but if you have, like I've got under eye creases and and if I wear lots of concealer, my under eyes also crease all the time. Like it's just, you can't stop a line from not creasing in my opinion. And the more powder you put on it, the more cakey it looks. So honestly, you just kind of have to learn to embrace those lines and all of that. I mean, I have got a few lines underneath my eyes and they always collect foundation and stuff all the time. It obviously just doesn't show on my Instagram, which is so normal and if you had actually seen me in person half the time, I also have foundation that catches in my smile lines and I also have foundation that catches in my eye lines. It's just a natural thing and I know so many people are like, oh, how to get rid of your smile lines with your foundation. There is no way. I'm sorry. Unless you're going to go for Botox and completely like fill those lines or completely relax your smile lines and look like this when you turn a smile then maybe you'll have no lines but it's natural it's a part of life it shows that you've got emotion and i honestly think that people should not be so self-conscious about it and rather just maybe carry like a little brush around with you and just blend it out throughout the day like it's not in my opinion it's not ugly at all so next up we're gonna go into some powder and one of my favorite powders of all time is this Catrice Glow Illusion Loose Translucent Radiance Setting Powder that is a tongue twister of notes it's a really nice powder and I just like to take my beauty blender with this and just dip the tip in there and just put a little bit under my eyes not too much and I don't like baking I feel like baking makes everything so cakey so I just push a little bit of this into my under eyes not too much because I don't like the powdery look and then a little bit onto my eyelids and because I applied matte foundation onto drier skin I'm not really going to set much of my face. I might tap a bit of powder in this general area because I do seem to touch my lower like mouth area a lot with my hands. So my foundation usually transfers because I touch my face too much. So I'm just going to go in and just tap a little bit of powder just all over my face but not like too much. Okay, so now we're going to go in with a bit of blush and one of my favorite blushes at the moment is this Yardley one. This is the color of it. It's such a nice like coral kind of chi vibe and it's in the shade lovers in the mist really love this one so much i've never been a blush person and this blush is the one that actually sold me on blush so with your blush for my face shape i kind of put it like there and then i drag it up so i like this because it's kind of a little bit of like a sheen to it while still making you have that healthy awake glow and i kind of for some reason i like like tapping my blush in it's like kind of weird like this is like kind of my technique and then i'll like swipe it down but then go up but yeah I kind of just apply my blush in like this general area sometimes I won't wear blush 
but most times I usually just put a little bit on. And then also if you want to go in with a cream blush, if you have drier skin, I highly recommend it. I just don't have one at the moment that's like really, really good. I've actually been using like a matte liquid lipstick, but it's not a matte one that dries down. It's just a matte finish and it's this one from Revlon. It's in the shade um, HD Seduction. But yeah, I am looking for a nice cream blush. If you guys know of one, please let me know down below. So then next up, if you have um, more texture on your face, and more like acne and stuff. I really wouldn't recommend going in with too much highlighter but if you're like me and you love to glow <laughs> then go in with as much highlighter as you want. But I'm just going to be going in with this Revlon Skin Lights the Prismatic Highlighter in the shade Twilight Gleam. So it's just like a nice golden -y highlight. And I'm going in with like a mini stipple brush just to disperse it lightly on my face and you want to put your highlighter just on the high points of your cheeks over here just for like a light glow so for an everyday look i would not go crazy with highlighter that is pretty much all i would do and i always like to just make my forehead glow a bit you can also add some highlighter to the inner corners just to make your eyes pop and then to the brow bone Okay, so then the last and final step when it comes to a foundation is just giving it a good set with some setting sprays. So if you have drier skin like me, I usually go in with a hydrating spray or if you have oily skin, I would recommend a matte setting spray. So the one that I love to use is this um, Urban Decay one that I started with and then also the MAC Fix Plus. This is the coconut scent. This is the hydrating one. MAC has a matte one just like this and Urban Decay has the Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray which is is incredible for making your makeup last if you have oily skin I promise you it dries that oil and it keeps your makeup perfect for so long so I'm just gonna quickly spray some of this one on because I really like this hydrating firming kind of spray so I like to always take my beauty blender and I take the clean side of it and I just like to push this into my skin just to give me that extra glow so it looks like I'm glowing from within so this is the completed foundation routine tutorial with some extra bits in between so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I hope I could help anyone that was struggling with their foundation if you guys want another one and maybe me focusing more on like an oily skin and actually maybe doing the oily skin routine on my own skin then let me know down below I wouldn't mind doing that at all but for now this is for a dehydrated face like mine and I hope you guys enjoyed watching don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one bye Get